As someone who is a hybrid film and digital shooter, I sometimes find it hard to match my digital photos with my film scans. A company called Dehancer recently reached out to me and asked me to review their plugin for Lightroom, so I was super excited to try it out. This video is not sponsored by Dehancer, they just asked me to review their plugin, so anything that's said in this video is completely 100% my opinion based on my experience. However, if you are interested in using Dehancer and wanted to save some money, I do have a code for 10% off, which also does help support my channel. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the editing process using the Dehancer plugin for Lightroom, as well as talk about what I like about it, what I think needs improvement, and just my overall general thoughts. Dehancer also just launched for iOS in the App Store, so if you're already a user of Dehancer or you like to edit on your phone, it has all the same great features and same workflow to the Lightroom plugin, so you can actually edit all your images on the go. So let's jump on into Lightroom and let me show you how I edit within Dehancer and my process for matching my digital photos with my film scans. Okay, so we're over here in Lightroom. I've got a photo here that I'm gonna walk you through how I go through the process editing a photo in Dehancer. Because Dehancer is based off the film print process, they do suggest a specific way that you edit your photos. And there is a step before bringing it into the plugin just to get the photo prepped and ready to get the most out of your image. So I set the, these settings in a preset so I can just quickly do that and then bring the photo into the plugin. I'll leave the settings on the screen for you to see, but if you wanted to do the same and uh, make the same adjustments and make the same preset, then you can do that as well. Once we have the photo prepped for Dehancer, we're gonna right click it and edit in Dehancer plugin. There are specific steps, like I mentioned earlier, to start developing your photo. And at first we're gonna start with a source correction. So that's just to bring up the exposure or bring it down, temperature, uh, basically a few minor adjustments before actually doing any serious edits. So I'm just gonna play around with this a little bit. It is a little bit dark, so I'm gonna bring it up. And I do want this to be pretty warm. So I'm gonna bring the temperature up and it does bring it a little more to the green. So I'm also gonna bring the tint up as well. And this is something that you might have to go back and forth and play around with. But after you do the source corrections, you can apply the film profile. So for me, I am going to use uh, Kodak Portra. You can also decide if you want to push or pull process it, and it does do some minor changes to the tones as well as the color. I'm gonna leave this at zero. After applying the film profile, they recommend you work on expand. So that's just basically setting the black point and the white point. That's basically the darkest blacks and the whitest whites. So for me, I'm gonna bring this up a bit just to get a little more detail in those blacks. And I think I'm gonna leave the white point as it is. After making adjustments to expand, we can go down to print. And this is where you can change the profile. So you can change it from linear, CDN log film, which would be uh, like a log format similar to what you would get out of log for a video. There's also Fujifilm 3513 and Kodak 2383 print film. And these are based off cinema print film. So uh, we're going to stick with Kodak Endura glossy paper because that would be uh, something uh, that would be a paper that you would print it on. And from here you can make additional changes to your image. So I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit more. I like it to be pretty bright. Tonal contrast. We'll bring that up a little bit so it's not so flat. And color density. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. That looks pretty good there. They recommend if you need to, you can revisit the expand so you can revisit where you set the black and the white points. I kind of like it where it is right now as it sits. And I'm going to go to the film developer and I'm going to pull back a little bit of the contrast here just to make sure I have some detail. I'm going to pull it down a bit and it's not really looking too saturated. So we'll bring the color boost up a bit. And when I edit, I like to use the sliders and go push it past where I'd like it and then kind of bring it back and just try and find that balance of where I, where I think it looks good. 
After that, we can go down to the color head. So this would be for like printing. We'll just enable that there. And all I'm gonna look at is the mid-tones here. That looks pretty good. Shadow tone. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave that pretty close and highlights tone for the shadows, mid-tones and highlights. You can adjust them individually for basically the temperature so you can make it warmer or cooler. So if I adjust the highlights, the highlights will get warmer or cooler. And as far as the color head for yellow, blue, magenta, green, and cyan, red, you have the option to edit these individually. Or if you hit gain, you can adjust them all at once. So it's kind of more of a linear, rather than uh, specific colors that you'd be adjusting. Uh, I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Then you can apply any additional uh, effects, such as film grain, there's the halation, bloom, as well as a vignette. I don't really touch the bloom and vignette too much. That's just something that's just my personal preference. I don't usually like adding too much bloom to the highlights or anything. I think it looks a little too glowy. I'm just gonna adjust a little bit more here for the grain. Can zoom in. One thing I do find about adjusting the grain is that it does take up a lot of power. So when you do adjust it, it does take a little bit of time before it actually shows up on the image. So if I bring the amount up, it might take a second before it actually shows that, but what I do like about the green is that there are a lot more features and a lot more that you can control. So rather than Lightroom's grain settings built in, on here you actually have the uh, control to adjust the shadows, midtones, and highlights individually. So I think it actually looks a lot more realistic than what you would get out of, uh, say, like the Fujifilm in-camera grain or the Lightroom grain that you would typically use. So I'm just going to bring down the midtones a little bit and bring down the highlights as well. Um, there are quite a few bright parts in the image, so I will use a little bit of halation. Definitely gonna take that down a bit. And there we go, I think we're good there. Once we're done, you hit okay, and it'll take you straight back to Lightroom. So we're gonna take the photo that we edited in Dehancer and compare that side by side with a photo that I actually took on film with Kodak Portrait 400. Okay, so right off the bat, I think the colors look pretty decent. Uh, there's a few changes that I would want to make to match it uh, a little bit better. And first of all is the road here. So the road on the actual film is a lot more blue rather than this kind of magenta warm tone. So we're gonna fix that. I think the easiest way to do that is just isolate the road using a brush. And we're just gonna paint that in. Try and make some adjustments here. Bring the exposure up. Bring the tint down, bring the temperature down, and maybe we'll bring this saturation down a little bit. Now it's looking pretty good there. The next thing that I notice is in the greens, the Kodak Portrait has a lot more green tones rather than this like yellow tone. So we're just gonna shift the greens a little more towards the green and the yellow and bring the orange back down towards orange. And the sky up here looks a little bit different. So I'm gonna bring the luminance up a bit and bring the saturation down just a touch. I'm also going to bring the overall warmth up just a little bit and exposure and just a few minor changes and it already looks quite similar to what we have with the actual film. So honestly, I'm pretty surprised, but that looks really close. What I do like about Dehancer is that in the actual film 
profile for Portra 400 is the yellows and the green shift kind of differently the, in a way that you wouldn't really get with Lightroom. So the transition between like these yellows here over to the green is a lot closer to what you would get from film. And we can desaturate the greens a little bit and bring that down. We're looking pretty good. So it honestly looks really good. The only difference that I would say is this, uh, this pole here on the sign. Um, the mid tone, mid to highlight tones are a little bit more shifted towards magenta with the photo that we edited in Dehancer. Whereas the mid tone to highlights on the actual film is a little bit cooler and a little bit more blue. If I didn't have these photos side by side, I would find it very hard to find a difference between the two or determine which one was actually shot on film. So it looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to do a few more comparisons on some other photos that I edited with Dehancer and compare it with the actual film that I shot. I believe all of these photos were also shot on Portra 400, so I edited uh, using the Kodak Portra 400 film profile in Dehancer. For all of these photos, on the left is gonna be the digital photo and on the right is gonna be the film. Looking at this one here, you can kind of see the highlights are a little bit different. The blues are a little bit shifted uh, with the Dehancer plugin. And I do find that this area where my wife Jo is standing, she's a little bit more brighter and there's a little more contrast in the midtones. But in terms of the actual color and the overall look, I think it's very similar. This one here is Jo with a goat. Yeah, same thing. I think the colors and the tones are pretty spot on, I would say. The only difference again is kind of like that contrast that's in the in the midtones here. But overall, like the greens and I think the grain looks pretty good. I'm honestly really impressed. This one here is a little bit different. This is where you can really see where that green and yellow shift or transition from yellow to green really shines. Is right here in the tree where we have like the bright glowing yellow on the leaves that transition into the actual green. So I think that's really accurate. I really like the colors of that. The halation was pretty nice. I think I, I kind of overdid it on this one just by a little bit, but overall, again, I'm really impressed with the colors and, and how closely it does match. Okay, I switched these ones up. So the digital photo is on the right and the film is on the left. And I just wanted to show you, I did a little bit of post work after the photo it was in Dehancer. And I basically just got the photo to have the most accurate colors as possible. And then made a few extra adjustments in Lightroom to get it to match a little bit better. So as you can see, it was a little bit flat and a little bit darker coming out of Dehancer. But a little bit of exposure, a little bit of vibrance and contrast, and it looks really good. First of all, what I like is that there's a wide variety of film profiles from color negative, positive, black and white, and cinema print. It just gives you a lot to choose from and a lot of flexibility. And since they are based off of actual film prints, the colors are actually quite accurate as to what they would be in real life. The film profiles are based off of actual film prints. So the way you edit actually reacts quite similarly to the way you would actually edit and process while printing photos. The film grain tool is also much more realistic than Lightroom's built-in grain sliders. And the reason is that there's a lot more control. So you can actually control how much grain is in the highlights, shadows, and midtones. Because in a film photo, it's gonna differ depending on how much light there is. The built-in halation tool actually works quite well and it's a nice addition to Dehancer because you can't actually create halation very well in Lightroom. While there are a lot of things that I do enjoy about Dehancer and I like how accurate that I can get the digital photos to match film, there's actually a lot of room for improvement. Although I do like the processing of the images, I felt like sometimes I wanted to adjust the highlights and the shadows individually or separately rather than just trying to adjust the contrast. But I do see where they're coming from, where this is kind of something that you would do in the printing process. So it is something that can be done either 
one step before editing in Dehancer or after editing in Dehancer. Another feature I did wish Dehancer had was a hover over preview for both the presets or the film profiles. It's just one of those features that I'm so used to in Lightroom that I really wish they had it included in Dehancer. It would be nice to have a quick menu for things like settings and keyboard shortcuts. There are keyboard shortcuts, which I don't think a lot of people know about. It is listed on the Dehancer website. These keyboard shortcuts do differ from the Lightroom ones, so it would be nice to be able to customize them and make them the same so that it makes it a little more seamless transitioning from Lightroom to the Dehancer plugin. The biggest room for improvement, in my opinion, is batch processing. Batch processing is sort of possible with Dehancer. However, it's really only limited to using Photoshop. If you use Lightroom, you're pretty much having to edit each image individually and right click it and then open up in the plugin. There is a last edits feature which automatically loads the previous photo that you processed in Dehancer into the next photo that you load. I do find it handy, but at the same time, I wish there was just a quick and easy feature like Lightroom where you can just copy and paste edits or sync the same edits across a number of photos all at once. You can also create your own presets within the Dehancer plugin. However, for future edits or other photos, you still have to edit them and open them up individually from Lightroom. I hope this video helps you match your digital photos to film. Once again, if you're interested in using Dehancer and wanted to save some money, make sure you use the code CAM10 for 10% off. Thanks again for watching and make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.